Want the high stakes stuff? The believe the hype stuff? The criminally good, emotional roller coaster, can't believe what you're seeing stuff? You know, the good stuff. AMC Plus has it all. Can't wait for the beginning of the end? Watch all new episodes of The Walking Dead one week early. Want to be chilled to the core? Set sail with the North Water, a thrilling Arctic drama starring Jack O'Connell and Colin Farrell. Plus, uncover gripping true crime content ad free and on demand. Expect the epic with AMC Plus. Sign up today at amcplus.com. AMC Plus, only the good stuff. Greetings, listener dear, and welcome to a Beef Brothers Cold Cuts. You're listening to Ben Clark and Matthew Crosby. There you I go. I really like that actually. That was a really, you know, that was it was very uh, morning radio. That, so, well, you back know. off my turf, man. <laughs> um, I, no, I enjoyed that a lot. That was that was good. Thanks. Um, so oh, this good. is the uh, this is the the Izzy Sooty Beef Brothers Cold Cuts that we oh. talked so much about, and by golly, we had fun, didn't we? We 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 talked to the bloody cows came home. <laughs> we really did. We 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 started, you know. Sort of late-ish in the evening f- for people with kids. And we late-ish finished early in the morning. <laughs> yeah, we just kept on chatting away. We had such a nice time. It was really, really fun to catch up with Izzy. It's been ages since we've all seen her. And yeah. um, it was really, it was just really, really delightful. Um, Parry is still uh, away in the world of other show business, so he's not on this episode at all. His boycott continues um, <laughs> until you join the Patreon guys. And let, until he gets to the... He's asked for 17 million followers. So the way to do that is to go to patreon.com forward slash Pappy's Flat Share and join today. And if you are a fan of Izzy Sooty, and of course, why wouldn't you be? Then you'll want to get onto the Patreon because on the Patreon, there's a, an extra bonus beef that we solved with Izzy. None of the information in that bonus beef is in the main feed. It's completely, it's a standalone beef and it's a really, really strong one. And um, if you do, you'll get a bunch of bonus episodes and you'll also get your name read out on the podcast in the Patreon Neighbourhood Watch Roll Call, which will be at the end of this episode. Oh, what a treat. What a treat. Speaking of what a treat, let's just get straight into this episode. Let's get into it. It was so good and there's so much yeah. of it. We might There's going to be a lot of it, yeah. <laughs> You don't need much more waffle from us. This is, uh, and of course, she's got a wonderful book out as well, so get the book. But this is Izzy Sooty on Beef Brothers Cold Cuts. Well, if you've got a problem, don't call it a problem. If you've got a problem, call it a beef. If you've got a beef, beef. maybe we can help you. Beef Brothers sorting out your beef. Cold cuts. Thanks so much for coming on the show. By the way, Parry's not here. He's not going to be able to do it today because he's making a movie. That's so exciting. So yeah, so he's taking a break off the podcast for a, for a, um, a couple of months. Okay, cool. Um, so that is yeah, just just to say we'll we'll this is this is the episode. Okay, cool. Uh, and also to say you're going to join us for the next few months, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fine. I'm yeah, going to change great, my great, great, great. Um, name to Tom. <laughs> What? So Tom, not are you not Tom, Tom Parry's Tom Sutty. Tom Sutty, right? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. I'll okay. be an amalgamation of the two of us. Which parts of your personality are you going to retain and which parts of his are you going to adopt? Um, I think I'll keep my hair. Yeah, good yeah. call, actually. Yeah. Um, I'd like to grow a few inches. I mean, this is all physical stuff, isn't it? Yeah, it doesn't really relate to the podcast. <laughs> no. But um, would, you, uh, would you honestly like to be taller? I think, you know, yes. You've I'll... never struck me as a short person, but then I am a very short person, so I don't see anyone as short. <laughs> I think I'd like to be You're like an, an inch giant taller. To Matthew. An inch, yeah. yeah. I think everyone would you, like an extra inch. Would do you? I would Craig I, Davis? I, well, I, could, I don't think but, he'd like an extra inch. No, and Clark, true. he doesn't want an extra inch on his height. He should. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I, I, well, how tall is how tall? Are you, what are you? About five six? Five four. Oh, you're five four. Yeah. Are you? No, right? are you really? Well, I think I might be five five. Actually, I never know what to put. You know, sometimes when you're doing. An acting job, they need your height. I think yeah. I was put five four, but I think I might be five four and a half. I think Ellis likes to think that I'm five four because he's like five seven. Yeah, five seven. Yeah, yeah. So it's a, <laughs> it's a, a nice, Got nice the bit of space there, Crosby. Yeah. Instantly. Well, I think <laughs> us fellow short comedians, we all check out how how tall each. Like, I know that I know that Joe, like, because I'm five five and a half. 
You've and all I got sh- it notched on the doorway of the comedy store, don't you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, the skirting board, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but I know I'm five, five and a half. Josh is five, uh, six and a half. Um, I think Jack D might be five, six. Uh-huh. Sort of bang on. But like we're all sort of, you know, there's, um, yeah. I don't I talk to like him shorter than me, basically. There's something in this, like a sketch. Yeah, it'll be a very subtle version of that sketch that um, Ronnie Corbett, Ronnie Barker and John Cleese did. Yes. You know, yes. They all stood in a line, an almost imperceptible incline. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you're, you're well, t- well, it's great to have uh, Tom Sooty on the show. Thanks. <laughs> See, my voice has changed. It's really good, actually. Yeah, that was really impressive. How is your Wolverhampton accent? Oh, you've... Uh, <laughs> I've been I, I've been eating things this week <laughs> I've lived I, well he's moved to Exeter now hasn't he so he that's might true. talk that's a bit like this actually. guys he's this moved to Exeter be... and started eating things <laughs> I'm, I'm just the jolly chap I'm from Wolverhampton what can you say it's like he's you know it's like he's right here on the oh, zoom it's, it's this quite, is uncanny yeah it's quite freaky actually it's blowing my mind oh i'm it's... tom sutty at your service <laughs> <laughs> he's got a quite a doesn't he go <laughs> when he laughs yeah he does a bit yeah he has got a bit of a, of a yeah a bit of an in a bit, like a bit of like a honk yeah like melanie from neighbors or jimmy carr yes jimmy carr yeah yeah He's got the, um, yeah, I, 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 I mean, I think, I think I believe him when he's doing that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not, yeah. not talking Jimmy about Jimmy, I'm talking about Tom. Oh, but, Tom, um, yeah. But yeah. The, the, the inhalation of breath, it's always, when, he, when you hear someone who, who laughs like that, <gasps> it's always hard to know whether or not they're just doing it because they feel like they should be doing it. <gasps> yeah. I'm just trying to, <laughs> it's hard to laugh when you. Yeah, like if I you just tr- gasped when I tried to do it. <laughs> Are you trying to do a fake laugh? I'm trying to do an in an, oh, in, yeah. an innie laugh. <laughs> yeah, it just sounds asthmatic, doesn't it? <laughs> I really hope all the listeners right now are, are on a pack train trying to just, do the same. Going, <laughs> <laughs> someone's so, so so they pulled the emergency cord. <laughs> doing a Heimlich manoeuvre on them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't realise you were fake laughing at my uh, joke there. <laughs> but thank you for confessing to it. <laughs> well, you can't laugh outwardly all the time, can you? You've got to take a you breath. You run out of breath. No, and the yeah, other exactly. thing is that I think there are different types of laughs. And I, th- I think I giggle, not when I'm like... <laughs> but like, if someone takes the piss out of me in a certain way, it really makes me laugh. And I think there's a different laugh for that, which is more like a giggle. Where it's like uh, I physically fold in on myself. Whereas, I, yeah, it's weird when you think, I think why you're laughing informs the laugh. Yeah, totally. Why Have you ever been on a date types? and kind of been like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you? <laughs> <laughs> Where was that date, Clarky? <laughs> well, it would have been a long time ago now. A but yeah. Kettish little girl. <laughs> but, Polite laughter, you know, kind of. I'm enjoying it. I'm, I'm enjoying this, but I'm going to kind of give it a little extra, just so. Oh yeah. Well, well, a, a little bit of extra is exactly what, uh, what Charlie and I. Whenever we go and see comedy shows, we always go. Let's just start laughing as soon as it's clear that the the, that the comic has oh, made a joke. Oh, that's nice. Let's just start laughing. Yeah. Because it'll get people. You know, it'll, it'll be yeah. a bit of cheerleading for the rest, and also. After a while, you sort of go, well, I don't know if I am enjoying this or not, but I'm laughing because yeah. I started, <laughs> you know. It's a good way to kind of kickstart yourself into in, in, into enjoying it. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. What kind of insults, though, Izzy, make you laugh? When you say people insert, uh, insult you in a, in a certain type of way, what are the kind of insults that, that get you? Well, I suppose, le- it, like, insults feels a bit strong. Let's know, let's... <laughs> <laughs> she's, like, she's laughing. There I think go. I think she's crying there. Actually, it. she's burst into tears. Um, I think Tom Sutty likes insults. <laughs> Tom yeah, Sutty loves yeah. insults. He dishes them out, and he can take them as he well. He can take them. Yeah, he's a good lad. He can take them. He's um, a good sturdy lad. 
Yeah, his, his shoulders are broad. He can take an insult. <laughs> he's a good all rounder. He's a good. He's a good. And he's bloke. quite all round. He's yeah. He's an all round good bloke. He's all round. He's not great at anything, but he's good at lots of things. Oh yeah, absolutely. He's uh, yeah. he's uh, is a jack of all, master of none. Yeah. 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 yeah absolutely. Um. um so- what? So well, I'll give you an example. Yesterday, my friend. This is actually about my mum, but we both laughed. Uh, my so, mum was describing wait, so you like you like people insulting your mum yes I do I, well, I like it when I see other people laughing this way and then I feel relaxed enough to laugh too but yes I do also like people insulting my mum in a nice way um, she was describing how to make three bean chilli and she kept going on about this woman called Rosemary Connolly or something who wrote this really famous vegetarian book oh yeah I know Rosemary yeah. Connolly yeah oh, okay. of course yeah, yeah so my friend Daniel was at the bottom of our steps having birthday cake because it's my birthday on Wednesday Happy and birthday. thank Happy you birthday, yeah. and um, she, she started to explain how to make three bean chilli and he'd already pointed out that she kept going on and on about Rosemary Connolly which was quite funny but then she described how to make it and she immediately said fry the bacon and <laughs> so then I said I thought you said it was meat free and then she said it is it is and then he said fry the bacon, add a sausage. And then it was very funny. Um, And she, and it was obviously one of those things that was very funny at the time, but I'm giving it as as an example because she really giggled, even though she's nearly 80, like a schoolgirl. And then I really giggled too. So it's that kind of insult. Someone saying that you're adding meat to a vegetarian dish rather than you're a total twat (laughs) how would you have reacted if your friend Daniel had said to your mum by the way you're a total twat rather than doing doing a funny the banter have been rolling but just just at the end the sting in the tail by the way the sting in the meat free tail Um, I think she would have been confused yeah I think, yeah. Well, there's only one way to find out. Next exactly. time, you've got it. You've got to prime Daniel. Next time, he sees your mum. <laughs> lovely bit of banter, lovely bit of riffage, and then at the end, by the way, Mrs. Sutter, you're a total twat. Yes. Let's see what happens. Report back. Tell I will. Us all about it. Yeah. The only way to find out is to try it. Absolutely. The yes, proof yes. will be in the three bean chili. So, um, so have we talked about what you're like, what you're, what kind of a flatmate you are yet? I don't feel like we have. Yeah. So I, no. I feel like, so I live in a, I live in a split level maisonette and I didn't know that before we decided to put it on the market, but it's two <laughs> floors of a house. Um, and with Ellis and my, my two kids um, and I think that I'm a different flatmate. I used to, I used to be, I think, a really fun but quite practically inconsiderate flatmate in the past. Sure. Like I used to claim that I like, and it was true that I didn't understand like when to wash the dishes and um, <laughs> that I couldn't like see dirt. Um, right, you know, like on okay. the worktops and stuff. <laughs> what a mad excuse! <laughs> My eyesight's too the bad kitchen. to clean. It's spotless as far as I can see. <laughs> well, it's like not even that. It was just like almost like guys. I'm too artistic to notice. Like dirt. Like yeah. In, in a, it was like I'm so. I'm thinking about my Edinburgh show. I can't. I can't think about the recycling as well. Like it was. Yeah. Yeah. If someone came along and saw a Jackson Pollock and then took the debt all to it, they'd wipe away great art. Exactly. That's what we're creating here. All those splats are, you know, ketchup and little coffee grains that have stuck to the, the kitchen counter. That is, that's my masterpiece. Exactly. This is telling the story of my existence. Exactly. It's the tapestry of our lives, guys. Yes, yes. Oh <laughs> Bacteria is good for you. What's wrong with you? I just remembered a story, by the way, that I think you told me, it, but I think it comes from your childhood. It's not when you were, uh, not when you were sort of. I think a, a, I know what you're gonna about the, the about wiping your nose. Yeah, yeah. Do you, do well, you, do you want? Do you, what, do you, shall I tell you how I remember it? Tell or me you how you remember it. it? Yeah. So basically, you would lie in bed at night, and you would pick your nose. And then you would just wipe it onto the wall next to your bed, but like under, kind of under the bed rather than, was it or like down the back of the the headboard or something like that? If it's wrong, I'll correct you as we go along. It was above my head on the wall. 
above your head on the wall. Right, okay. I thought it was somewhere that was a little bit more hidden than that. Um, because did did So we're did talking then- about like five foot four-ish. <laughs> so you'd 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 lie in bed and you wipe above your above the above the bed when i was wipe. lying down yeah so okay so about the length of an arm above the bed and uh and then after a while uh, it got covered in like silverfish yeah so <gasps> basically yeah the, the why you thought it was lower down was because i used to wipe my hand along the wall every few days once they dried and they would all fall off down oh behind the bed into the yeah. same place because I had a double bed amazingly at like the age of seven but I always used to sleep on the same side so the bogies formed this were forming this bogey mountain without me realising because I so didn't ever clean my room surprisingly so you now you, you know what kind of flat a little, a little boyfriend out of bogies to yeah, lie essentially, next to you on the double yes. bed. I was creating. It was a science fiction experiment. A literal bogeyman. <laughs> yes. Yes. A natural bogeyman under my bed. So, the, so there's um, like a mountain of bogey under your bed. Yeah. Uh, yes. And then one day my mum sort of said, "Enough is enough. This room's a real mess. Let's clean it." And I moved, looked under the bed, and then moved the bed. And there were so many things under the bed, like plates with loads of crumbs on them and clothes and everything. And I distinctly remember the moment I looked to the corner and was like, what the fuck is that? Oh. And so all the bogies had gone grey and kind of translucent because they were so old and they'd gone really dry. And I think when I brushed my hand along the wall, I just thought, they've gone. They've I didn't gone. think yeah, about yeah. where they'd gone. Why would you? You know, you flick a bogey away and it's gone. Yeah, you didn't start thinking like that until well into your late 30s. <laughs> <laughs> That was that was when that was when thinking about dirt and its consequences really kicked in for you. Around yeah. sort of thirty eight, thirty nine, something like yeah, that. Yeah, thirty eight, thirty nine. See those guys. <laughs> <laughs> the dirt's translucent to me. I once yeah. did that with a with a. My mum used to make me sandwiches for school that I didn't like, and so I'd I'd try to sell them, and if I couldn't sell them, I'd just. <laughs> Hoy, hoy them somewhere. Them. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sometimes my mate would buy me buy them off me for like twenty p. Like, That's so like enterprising. Yeah. Thanks. Why are you not Alan Sugar? That's the story that everyone off The Apprentice has as like their, <laughs> I was selling sandwiches in the playground at the age of four. You know, like that's the story they've got. Why have you not then? Why, what you don't know is that certain people just peak at a certain time, don't they? You peaked. <laughs> that was your did. moment. I, I, I just, I didn't so much peak as just I plateaued. Oh, yeah. That's still the same. Clarky still sells sandwiches in the playground. <laughs> what, what were the sandwiches that you didn't like? Uh, it was more. It was. It was basically any sandwich because she she did, uh, which now would probably be amazing homemade bread. Which I, as a child, I just didn't want at all. It was very dark and heavy, and uh, I so it didn't matter what was in wh- it. White sliced, so pretty much anything she made. But then I, uh, she thought I liked chicken salad because that's what my mate liked, and he would buy him. So then, what would you eat? Salad. Would you buy Not something with much. a twenty p? Yeah, try to. God. And then, and then when I came home from school, I'd have a bowl of cereal. Yeah. So you'd be starving coming home from school, yeah. having sold your sandwiches. And mum would think, like, he's a growing, growing boy. <laughs> 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 and you were living purely on Cocoa Pops, <laughs> one meal a day. <laughs> it's good you didn't have homemade cereals. My mum was a bit like that. She used to make this um, carrot soup with heat. Hide Izzy, wheat your mum is a twat. <laughs> <laughs> See, I laughed then. We've Indeed, established this now. Stuff. No, this is, we can't. We can't make. Uh, uh, final time. Final time. If, I yeah. know you're, you're going to mention your mum again. If you, if you do, I'm just going to be nice you're just about gonna, it. You've met my mum. I know. Let's she didn't it. think let's... you were a twat. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Which is miraculous. <laughs> let's be honest. Real... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she is a twat if she doesn't think <laughs> that's me. <laughs> that's, she's, she's not yes. a twat. She's a terrible judge of character. <laughs> That's like um, the witches. What was the test they used to do with witches? If they floated, they were a witch. And if they drowned, they weren't. Yeah. Something yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah then they got killed right. anyway if they floated. Yeah. 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 She's, yeah. If she thinks you're a twat, then she's a twat. And if she doesn't think you're a twat. No, if she doesn't think you're a twat, then she's a twat. And if she thinks you're a twat, then you probably think she's a twat. Yeah. Exactly. Um, either, either way, anyway, someone's getting burned. <laughs> just, just to finish my point with the sandwiches. What oh, yeah. I did, uh, what I did uh, with one of them was just... So down the back of my wardrobe, like behind my wardrobe, 
And years later, when we went to decorate my room, we pulled pulled the wardrobe away, and there was just this black brick wrapped oh in God. cling film. Oh I was like, "What is Do you that?" You know what? It's we probably really realised it was a sandwich. It's really good. It was wrapped in cling film because yeah, you, you could have got mice. Absolutely stunk. Yeah. From the sorting, I can be. So we should do um, sure. We, we should do some someone else's beefs really after hearing he, hearing all the problems we've got. And this one, uh, this one is absolutely fantastic. By the way, it's from Adam, uh, and it's called Potential Ghost Beef. Now Adam has got in touch via Beef Brothers Podcast at gmail dot com. If you'd like to Great get in touch as well, that's the place touch, to do it. Actually. He says hello. I'll keep it brief and use some bullet points for this. The gist is that as a family, we've been haunted by a screaming ghost, but everyone refuses to accept it. Here we go. Okay. Bullet point number one. Family holiday at a remote cottage in the Moors, a regular holiday spot, an old Methodist chapel that was converted in the 1970s and still looks like the 1970s inside. Bullet point two. First afternoon, everyone hears a loud scream. We are all in the same room. Someone says, oh, it's probably just the dog yawning. The dog is asleep in the same room. Bullet point number three. During the night, something screams directly in my ear, long enough for me to wake up, sit upright, and it's still going. Whatever it is, it seems to run out of breath. This happens again on the third night. Oh. My brother sleeping in the same room says he also hears the scream but is an unreliable witness. He's well known for imagining these sort of things. A previous holiday, I worked to find him staring out the window. Oh my God, this is really creepy. I worked to find him staring out the window, whispering, they are here. This is actually what? one of the, this is, this is, when it, the beefs are not normally this scary that yeah, we get from our listeners. Scary. And this if they're waiting really for ter- a pizza <coughs> and they're like, delivery are here. Oh, oh it could be, it could have, it could have been that. Yeah. But I think oh. you would, would you whisper it? They are here. No, you'd say it. Yeah, you'd just say it, wouldn't you? You'd say they're here as well. You wouldn't say they are here. Yeah, I think it's the the fact that there's no conjunction there. Yeah. yeah. Um, No one else believes me. In the next few days, I'm shot down constantly whenever I mention the scream. It's probably a fox. That'll just be a deer. There's an owl around. It'll be that. It's not an animal. I work in nature conservation and know the sounds that animals make. It then turns out my sister also heard someone running around uh, running around the outside of the house in the night, but ignored it. I cannot stress enough how remote this cottage is. There's other weirdness, but I've rambled on long enough. We're already booked to go again this year. <laughs> <laughs> and it maddens me that we are willingly subjecting ourselves to a haunting. How can I persuade these people who have been subject to the same spookiness as me that the beast is real and we should go on a different family holiday or maybe not one at all? To to be clear, I don't believe in ghosts, but this is still an unpleasant enough experience to not go there again. Loving the podcast as per, although it's extremely depressing how much time I spent listening to you, str- to, to you strangers the last year rather than my real life friends. Thanks, Adam. Well, thank you, Adam. What Thanks, a, Adam. What a wow. message. Love Firstly, that. Firstly, let's just do, a, let's just do a, a little roll call of who, who here believes in ghosts. Clarky? No. Is he? Agnostic. Yeah, I... I'm the same. I sort of don't, I don't, th- I don't think I do, but then I have had some sort of ghostly experiences. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Like, I feel like I'm open to it, but yeah. I don't think I've ever, there are two, I used to do a lot of Ouija boards when I was younger and I became known as a person who could start Ouija boards off. And I, I, yeah, I used to do them on my own a lot. Um, my mum taught me how to do them. Wow! So wait, how do you like? So so starting the Ouija board off is you're all are you all holding like a glass or something like that? Yeah, or a coin. Around? I used to do it with spirit. Actually, glass. Mum, when mum showed me how to do it, which was only I was only about ten or eleven, it was a glass because I used to have to say "Spirit of the Glass, I believe in you," and then I used to draw out the alphabet on a piece of A4 paper and numbers and yes, no with a cross in the middle, and I, I mean. So many people don't believe in Ouija boards, but it used to move and it really didn't feel like it was me moving it. And it sometimes took like half an hour for me to get it to move. And I I spoke to so many people over the years, like people who died in the plague, people like... And then, so then a really scary thing happened, which was I did it with my two best friends from school um, at one of their houses. And we spoke to a soldier who died and we asked him to prove that he was a spirit. And he named all these places in Norway that we quickly wrote down. 
And when we looked them up in an encyclopedia, none of them existed. But we were all... <laughs> <laughs> so, that, so that there is the oh, proof that is you so, were making them up yourself. It's just... Uh, <laughs> What's One, scary is just how much of an idiot that soldier was. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> he didn't know how to spell. Why he, did we get the one dyslexic soldier <laughs> who... <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 couldn't we have got one who'd, who'd at oh, least got you know GCSE English the better one. <laughs> <laughs> we also did one at a party once and we got we thought John Lennon I ended up putting this in my book um, we got John Lennon at this party in Sheffield and we were doing it in his bedroom and when I was doing it with other people as well there was a feeling that could they be moving it could they be moving it but I really used to feel the difference when I can't tell you like it was an amazing buzz when it used to whip around the board and it was like spelling out words so quickly it is like it has an energy of its own and maybe it is just your your kind of c- collective energy or when you're on your own you tap into something else but anyway we got John Lennon and then we spoke to him like very briefly then we were like could you go and get Bob Marley and then he said no and we were like he's annoyed with us but we really and we were like can you tell him he's a legend <laughs> Yeah, I think that I don't think any, you know, even when they're dead, no celebrity wants you to say, by the way, could you get someone better? <laughs> <laughs> We're all big reggae fans here, you know, and I think some of, you know, like the Beatles stuff was obviously good, but some of the solo work is just retreading rock and roll as far as I'm concerned. You weren't, you weren't necessarily an innovator when it came to the, the, the solo the solo worker. Uh, Johnny, that... John, oh, he's gone. <laughs> um, so, so, so you got the, you got this... This, this, you're, you're, people are spelling stuff out for you and have you got someone there like writing that you, are you have you got like a sort of stenographer who well yeah I mean in that case with the Norwegian soldier yes we did we didn't normally used to write stuff down but another time so normally you can't ask for people like when we got John Lennon we must have got a spirit to ask for John because you can't normally request at least I couldn't but I remember once doing one when I was about 15 you couldn't and we, you, wait can I just say you couldn't request and you still you knew you couldn't request and you still asked for Bob Marley <laughs> yeah, we you, <laughs> <it's a cardinal laughs> well once you've you, got <laughs> once you've got someone on the line then yeah, it's got, you can't request initially exactly Ben once you've got someone on the line then you can request but you can't go to the Ouija board and be like I only want to talk to someone if it's you know yeah, if it's my yeah, granddad yeah yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, so we did one in a place that we used to call Down by the Rocks, which was this sort of muddy bank near our house that was the closest thing to the sea. But we used to think it was a beach. Um, and I said, if anyone's there, please move to yes. And it moved to yes. And we said, spell out your name, which is always what we used to do first. And it spelled out Izzy. Uh, but it what? spelled it wrong. It spelled it I Z Y. And Jamie, someone from school, was it? Um, Someone from the little group of friends I used to hang out with. Someone said, are you Izzy's ghost from the future? And it said, yes. But I think that was quite an easy question to say (laughs) yes to. (laughs) What can you tell me about my future? Well, you'll go to the depot office and change your name. But I'm just just the spelling. (laughs) Um, uh, So I could ask it any question and the only... Thing that I could think to ask it was how many times I was going to have sex in my life and it said something <laughs> insane like 33 million <laughs> 6,000 and whatever times and we wrote that down as well and I put that in a shoebox and then every time I had sex I used to write it in my diary and try and get and then once I got to 20 million I was like yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've proved my points uh, <laughs> can I just ask how did you notch your bedpost was it was it bogeys on the wall again? <laughs> Bogus on the bedpost, the next film from... <laughs> Where would it be from? Um, the other thing is that when my dad died 10 years ago, mum said that she'd read that dead people who've recently passed away leave white feathers if they're, like, sending a message, which is a really nice I've thing. I've heard that, yeah, yeah. And she... And this is true, and I think this is the closest thing to make me believe in, not ghosts, but I suppose spirits, or that there's another world up there. We couldn't find the stopcock, you know, th- to turn the water off. There was a problem with the water and we needed to find the stopcock and she never dealt with any of that. So she didn't know where it was. We looked everywhere for hours and hours and then she finally looked under the bath, which is probably the place we should have been in. <laughs> <laughs> so I was on the Ouija board going, where's this stopcock? <laughs> oh. Norway, oh, it can't be in Norway. Again. 
<laughs> What's Norwegian for stop cop? <laughs> um, but guess what? <clears throat> there was a white feather on top of it. And how could it? I know. How That's, could it that have That is got? pretty wild, isn't yeah, it? So yeah, so that is the closest. And I remember the other day thinking, seeing a white feather in the living room, I was like, Dad's thinking about me. And then I noticed that the cushion had basically burst and there were loads of white feathers. <laughs> 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 yeah so that that white feather thing does make me think um, and a bit of the Ouija boards yeah I mean was there was the reason you um, had to turn off the water is because a, a load of doves had flown into the immersion heater is that the reason because <laughs> <laughs> that might have an explanation for that <laughs> yeah so what's our what's our advice to our friend Adam here well like Clarky, as a as a non-believer, what do you what? How do you explain the the? How do you explain the screaming, the noises outside the the house? Um, the uh, well, I don't know. You know, I, I, obviously he's kind of answered the big one himself. Of it could could it be a deer? Could it be a fox? Remember, I was camping uh, once, and there was that absolute mad sound. I can't remember quite what it what it sounded like, but it sounded like somewhere between like human or inhuman. By and my and my brother, who's very outdoorsy, was like, "No, that's." I was like, "I think that's a deer," and he was like, "No, no way." I went to try and find it, but couldn't. Um, it stopped when I got near, but and then I looked it up the next day, and it was it was a male. It was a male deer. It was a stag. How did you look it up? Did you? Uh, is there like a thing that you can like a like Siri? Shout? I just like kind of googled yeah. it, and 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 they had like audio. They had right. like audio. So it's the sort but, of thing I mean, that when people are, when like you know people are hunting for Bigfoot, they might hear that and think, oh, that sounds like a bit like a, a, a sort of wilder creature than just a yeah, just a than a, yeah. And Shazam well, is what I meant. There should be a Shazam for animals. Yeah. I think there's a isn't there like a sh- Shazam for bird song. Yeah, I'm not sure can, there is. You can play, you, you can play the bird song, and they'll tell you what. Oh, they, uh, but then Clarky would you have to repeat it. Clarky would have had to recreate the noise himself, wouldn't you? Yeah, in that's the morning. It, isn't it? Yeah, and then Could, the next group of camp. It turns out it was the previous group of campers trying to sh- shazam it, making right, yeah. the noise <laughs> yeah. out in the woods. <laughs> time, and we just had this loop going of us freaking <laughs> out the next people. Could you recreate it, it now, like, though? Vroom. Yeah. And but what I mean, did you think it was? Like a wild... I thought it was deer. Oh, but so you're... you weren't scared? You didn't think it was like a... No. Okay. My brother that... thought it was something supernatural. I don't know what he thought. I, I, don't, I don't know if he did, but he was like, it's not a deer. It's not a deer. But listen, It's hard listen. when the person who's supposedly the expert says it's not the thing. Like yeah. he he was the one who was scared and he had the knowledge of so you've got to trust him. Yeah. yeah. And this guy's saying that he works in conserv- conservation and it's not. But what if he's like your brother and he's a little he could be a bit wrong. It could be in a dream and I know that sometimes I I felt like I've woken up and thought I'd heard a voice kind of from my dream also be in reality mm-hmm. like it started in my dream but finished outside of it but, the, but I think that's just my brain doing that but he said I'm, he sat upright and it was still going yeah I mean that's like, it that doesn't seem like you know that's not that's that sort of beyond you know night terrors or, or kind of half asleep half awake he, can, he yeah. sits up you can hear it, and it's screaming in his ear so unless yeah. the deer was in the room you know yeah how I, is and also what the people other people have done weird stuff or heard it, haven't they? It's not just him. Yeah, yeah. his I brother mean, I, hearing it in the same room. Although he did qualify that his brother's a bit, bit weird. Like, <laughs> but I think the the, the 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 crazy thing is that in spite of all of this, they they've all heard it. Everyone in the family heard it the first time. Everybody hears it, right? They blame it on yeah. the dog yawning, and they go, "Yeah, that's fine. We're going to carry on going to this place." <laughs> I tell you what, <laughs> why not? You know, I get genuinely on Airbnb. be interested. He should. He should. Get in touch. Let me know where it is. I'll go for a. I'll go you're for a weekend. Oh my god, do I'd it. go. How many you're does it sleep? We should all go. Well, yes. I mean, it, it certainly seems like family. You know, family holiday. We're talking. You know, we've got we've got a, a brother here. I think we, we're assuming some parents as well. You know, at least one parent. So it's it can at least fit three. We should do a most haunted there. Oh my god, let's really den- genuinely do it. Yeah, I'd be up for that. 
you know, the, like the, the only thing is we'd have to say no kids. Yeah. Because they get too scared. Well, but also they're, they're screaming as well. Oh yeah. You know? so like, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, just, oh, I've just a scream. I've just heard a scream. Oh yeah. That, well, there's there's three kids here. <laughs> I think the dog yawning thing, I think the dog could yawn in its sleep. I think the fact that the dog is, in, it is asleep doesn't disqualify it yawning. Yeah, I think as well, you know, you're in, if it's a remote cottage, I think those senses are already mm-hmm. tingling a bit. Mm-hmm. And you're almost, you know, you, and, and then you everything you hear seems suspicious or... Yeah, but it's the screaming. I think Crosby, as you said, it's. I mean, yeah, sure. The it, screaming, the screaming does feel like pretty, pretty it, hard it, to explain away. I've, I've just, I've, I've just realised something. Go on. In the horror movie, the guy who thinks he he can hear the noise is always reassured by everybody else. No, it's nothing. It's nothing. Why? Because they're in on it. Oh. oh. It, you've got, you've got it. You've got to not go on that holiday. They're planning something. <laughs> There's going to be some some wicker man shit. Your family, uh, you, honestly, if you see your brother and he's packing like big hoods or something in his rucksack, <laughs> I think I think something's going to go down, Adam. I think I'm giving you I'm giving you a warning here. Just say sorry. This year I'm going to go on a little a little you know just I'm going to go on a city break or something. You know I'm just gonna I'm going to go to you know they keep doing those adverts for how good Sheffield is. Go to Sheffield, you yeah. know, um, do something like that. Go and go and go and stay in a, go and stay in a travel lodge and do a do a pub crawl. Do something like that instead. Don't go with your family to a remote cottage where you can hear screaming in the night and everybody else denies it's there. Yeah, it's just it, you know, if we yeah. know the tropes of horror, you, I think, I think my my only advice to you is you're never going to persuade them because they're in on it. It's going to go. It's going to go kill this on you. And one of us will replace him if he wants. You know, oh, we were talking about yeah. going. Yeah, we'll go instead. <laughs> I now I've just said that I think his Adam's family going to murder him. I'm loath to say, but I'll go instead. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever you look most like, Adam, they'll go. Yeah. And, and we'll stick to that. Let all I can hope is Send that Adam Tom Sutty and you yeah, get yeah. away. <laughs> just hope Adam is a six foot two, uh, shaven headed man with broad shoulders from the Midlands. Um, I, I, yeah, I think you're not going to persuade him. Just, just leave, man. Yes, I think that's beef solved. From the sorting out your beef, beef solved. Want the high stakes stuff? The believe the hype stuff? The criminally good emotional roller coaster? Can't believe what you're seeing stuff? You know the good stuff. AMC Plus has it all. Can't wait for the beginning of the end? Watch all new episodes of The Walking Dead one week early. Want to be chilled to the core? Set sail with the North Water, a thrilling Arctic drama starring Jack O'Connell and Colin Farrell. Plus, uncover gripping true crime content ad-free and on demand. Expect the epic with AMC Plus. Sign up today at amcplus.com. AMC Plus, only the good stuff. This is from Anna and Nick. Hi, pappies, lads. I've got Anna a and ju- Nick. Hang on, what about Tom Sutty? <laughs> is that any worse? Well, Tom Good Sutty's point. not getting a mention here. <laughs> the honorary, the honorary uh, Pappy's lad. I've got a chunky beef for you, which hopefully you and your guest can help me out with. I've been one of the lucky ones over lockdown. I moved in with my Dutch boyfriend in the Netherlands at the start of everything, and I've had the best year of my life. Oh, this, I know. It's lovely. This has also led to a lot of indulgence, including, but not limited to, consuming large quantities of rich Belgian beers. Sounds Ooh, brilliant. Yes, Late night snacks. Love it. And cap salon, brackets, incredible Dutch loaded chips. Couldn't recommend highly enough. We've also left our exercise regimes by the wayside in favour of binging our favourite series. Herein the beef lies. Unfortunately, all that happiness has resulted in us both gaining weight. Now, this isn't the worst thing in the world, and I know lots of people have the same lockdown experience, but we've both agreed that we'd like to get back into shape to get those healthy endorphins. We've agreed on this multiple, in bold, times. We periodically try a new fitness regime, but we can't seem to get into the habit while living together. My beef is not just with my boyfriend stroke flatmate for encouraging these outbursts of indulgence. 
but also with myself for doing the same. Brackets, I might be even worse. Instead of adopting each other's positive, healthy routines, we end up sharing in each other's treats or sofa time. God, this sounds so great, doesn't it? It sounds mm. wonderful. <laughs> Please help relate. us, puppies. How can we flip it around and get back into healthy habits? We'll try out any suggestions to get us out of this default laziness stroke indulgence and back to activity. Firstly, I've looked up Capsalon. Oh, yeah. Uh, it looks Is really it kind of like a poutine type. No, it's more like everything you get from a kebab shop chucked on oh. top of some chips oh, with some Gouda. Oh, my God, I'm going to Google it. Yeah, so it's a, it's a fast food dish created in 2003 in Rotterdam, consisting of a layer of French fries placed into a disposable metal takeaway tray, topped with Donner or, or gyro meat, uh, covered with a slice of Gouda cheese and heated in an oven until the cheese melts, then shredded iceberg lettuce with garlic sauce, um, hot sauce, and uh, oh yeah, it's got garlic sauce and hot sauce, and it looks like kind of uh, sliced onions as well. So basically, it's a, it's a, it's a kebab in a, in a little yeah, with no it's bread meat and chips with no but yeah kebab with, it's a, it, yeah but with, with, the, with the hot sauce which is the, which is an absolute that and really cheese as well that that's the thing you don't get you know you know kebab meat and chips you yeah. don't get a, the layer of cheese no you don't but the, I'm looking at a photo of it where the chips look very soggy which I don't like I don't think I'd like the chips to soak up all the like juices and stuff I think I like chips quite dry eat it really fast then yeah that's what you gotta do Just gotta or eat it turn it upside yeah. down you could have an upside down capsule on where you tip it out on. into another plate and eat the chips first. Guys, I'm not sure we're helping. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, we're going to come and move in with you and we're going to we're going to eat the food before you get to it. Exactly. That's all the of our, all of our beefs involved will come to you now. <laughs> we're going to go and live where you live. <laughs> Um, right. Oh. Are you are you an exercise kind of person, Izzy? Well, actually, I've started running. Um, I put on weight in lockdown, as, as Anna said, like a lot of us Everyone did. did, yeah. Um, yeah. Because we started having like four or five meals a day and I'd have like toasted tea cakes every day at four o'clock and then Baileys and Horlicks every night, <laughs> which Ooh. is incredible. That is so <laughs> That sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, yeah. the problem is, is find it with with hearing other people's bad habits. It's like you're like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm yeah, gonna no, do exactly, that. yeah. Yeah, someone says I've started running. You go, oh, that's great for you. But then they start describing Baileys and Horlicks. Oh my god! Yes, like, please. Oh, keep keep yeah, I'm gonna, yeah. Of the two know. things you mentioned, keep I'm gonna talking. do that one. That's the hook. Izzy, have you yeah. done any? Have you like done any uh, work that's sort of taken you out of the house? Uh, yes, recently? I've done a bit. Yeah. I've just been doing an acting job that took me out of the house and I did bits and bobs over lockdown. I did mostly work in the house over lockdown, which... Isn't it, isn't yeah. it mad though? Because I've found this now with the few jobs I've done that are outside the house, how infrequently people think you need to eat. Well, yes, <laughs> like, compared to- I've just been like on working on jobs where they go, okay, so yeah, breakfast is at seven and then we'll do a lunch at one thirty, And then if you're still around, we'll do a tea at six. And you go, no, no, no. What about they, they, 11 o'clock? What yeah, about 4 exactly. o'clock? Yeah. I'm going to be starving at 8.30am. What am I supposed to do? You know, it's, and you, you feel like, you feel like such a pig going, is there anything, is there anything at all? I know we ate breakfast just a second ago, but can I just, like, you've got an apple or a banana or something. I can just, I no, can I, I know. I'm so I did used. A, I did a job the other day where um, it was seven till seven filming and they'd only, They'd only given us, they only gave us lunch to go and get food. And also they were like, we're not going to do catering. What? So, but you can have like 10 pounds per diems. And it was just, I was like, I'll go somewhere local. But it was just in the middle of nowhere. I walked for ages and just had to go to a, a corner shop. What oh, did And just know? like God. have a corner shop sandwich. Yeah, so you're eating like frazzles and a Coke and a, a wet sandwich. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, I flipped it upside down so it wasn't wet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of think of these things. But yeah, it's so bad. It's like I used to get it on the, the, the first day back of um, holiday, uh, the first day back at school after Christmas holidays when you would get yes. to like the end of first period and you're like, I feel like I'm about to collapse. How am I able? <laughs> like, well, I've got like, you know, I've got another 50 minutes before I can go to you know eat my eat my penguin bar or whatever I've got in my lunchbox no it's, I know it's it's sort of like that on New Year's Day isn't it because you've got that period between <laughs> yeah. Christmas and New Year that is just an absolute hinterland of and, treats and that's what a lot of people have said that's what 
lockdown felt like it just felt yeah. like that that weird period you know you know when you had nothing really to do and you just stayed in the house and you just ate that's and so, so true like, did you go through got. this i went through this period of buying like fancy bread and stuff i started doing sainsbury's shops every week and then i'd also like sometimes buy like two boxes of chocolates and stuff yeah. and then just i would never normally buy boxes of chocolates but it was like i got so bored of eating all the normal treats after about two months i was like it's almost like a drug addict who wants more of a buzz. I was like, I need, uh, I need like a box of chocolates. It can't be a dairy milk bar. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be, it's got to be Thornton's. And also yeah. the way, you know, the the way we, 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 we had that as well. We were just, you just put them away during a half hour TV show. It's just, it's mad. Um, and again, we're not helping. No, Anna we're Nick, not helping. We are making, <laughs> we are saying, we are showing our empathy. We are, no, I, I, I think you'd be really hard pushed to find someone who didn't. And people probably drank more if people, you know, if they drink. I don't drink very much, but I drank more in lockdown. I don't, I do think that everyone kind of definitely put on weight or got more unhealthy in some yeah. way. Because also we weren't allowed to go out. I did I did couch to 5k and I do really I do still run and I really love it um that's actually that's not a bad thing the couch to 5k yeah do like because I know I know people it's, it's trickier when you're in the same house but I know people if they connect up their accounts you know that is an incentive for people because they go oh look I know so and so has already been for a run today and I haven't yes. I'm gonna feel bad that sounds good it doesn't quite deal with the situation of if if I know so and so hasn't gone for a run, and I know so and so has bought some of those soggy chips, no. and they're waiting back at home for me, that's. I think the really yeah. the really hard thing is treats being in the house. I wonder if they make this capsule on themselves, or they. It looks like something you'd you'd buy. You deliver, yeah. It looks like that. That would be a classic. You know, you've it, it, what it looks like is you've had your dinner, but then you've had a, like a bottle of wine or like a yeah. you know. Three or four we watching beers and you've film. Gone, yeah, and you've gone, do we just order some capsule on? It'll just, it'll, it'll be here in 20 minutes. Yeah. We'll, you know, even if we're not hungry now, we will be then. <laughs> 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 the, when we smell it, we'll yeah, want it. absolutely. <laughs> I, I'm still, by the way, I'm on a Zoom chat to you, but I'm still looking at the Google Images page for capsule on Oh my fries. God, yeah. I I'm just can't stop looking at it. It's unbelievable. If you're if you're listening to this podcast now uh, and you've, you know, on a device that has uh, internet, then absolutely. Um, who would be listening to it on any device that doesn't have internet? Um, g- good I, luck if you're interested listening to it on a device that doesn't. See, this could be an option. I can, looking through the Google Images of Capsalon, see a healthy Capsalon recipe which has potatoes instead of chips i mean who am i kidding this just doesn't sound as nice but then chicken <laughs> thigh also, fillet <laughs> also it's it's not that much healthier if you're having potatoes it's still potatoes isn't it? yeah and then there's lots of cheese and lettuce and tomato so yeah it's essentially the same with potatoes yeah. yeah right we've 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 got to help them out here because we've we've, we've done too much of <laughs> go on clarky help us out i would say try and keep the treats to the weekend that's yeah. that's that's what I try and do with with the drinking and the treats. I don't always do it. I, I quite frequently don't, but it means your weekends are better because you're like, hey, we made it, and um, it it you just kind of oh, we can't because it's a weekday. You start to just rule rule it out a little bit. Yeah, I think that's, set yourself certain right. days. Well, what about though? What about giving yourself Wednesday and Saturday? So then it's not a big gap yeah. between them two two oh, treat true. days a week so you, you know then yeah, you've got that's good you know when it when it's saturday you won't feel quite so bad about when it gets like monday or tuesday of going well, we can't have a chocolate box yeah i can have it on wednesday yeah wednesday's another oh two, yeah, i'm not saying not to have chocolate bar i'm not fucking no, but, insane no, i can't but, wait i <laughs> <laughs> wait till the weekend to have a fucking chocolate bar i'm talking about the capsule on me <laughs> You're talking about a capsulon and five boxes of chocolates. Yeah, that's it. And two boxes of wine. <laughs> you know what? As well, I've just started thinking about. Um, I think you could do sweet capsulon. You know, like oh that's, what are you doing? God. You know, what you're doing? You know what you're going to like, if you go to Franca Manca, they basically manage, they've managed to get away of like selling you a pizza three times, where they sell you the pizza, they sell you the garlic bread, which is the same, exactly the same yeah. size and shape as the pizza, but just with you know with garlic on it, uh, and then they sell you the um, basically pizza dough with like Nutella on the top of it. Yeah, and you go. I've just eaten three pizzas. Three pizzas. Here. <laughs> 
I, I'm supposed to be doing a gig in 20 minutes. What's going on? <laughs> I've eaten three pizzas. <laughs> I've slid under the table and I don't think I can come back up. I'm the first person to have to be carried out of a Franca Manca. Um, but yeah, yeah. Like, but like, I feel like you could do... You definitely could. You waffles could do... or pancakes for the base, it's... maybe. Exactly, like like waffle at the bottom. You know, uh, it would have it would probably have an element of like ice cream, yeah. melted chocolate, marshmallows, like melted marshmallows for the kind of uh, gouda cheese type thing. Yeah, I oh feel like that's God. how you do it. So and then like so there we go. Shaved, <laughs> shave shave <laughs> shavings of chocolate, white chocolate shavings on the top to be like the iceberg lettuce and the uh, and the onion. Yes, and then maybe <laughs> like fruit, red fruit pastels for the tomatoes. Oh yeah. Yeah, or if you want to be healthy, Ooh. like raspberries. Yeah, if you like, you know. Oh yeah, so it's, it's a healthy meal. So, now. To he- so it's actually, it's, it's basically a smoothie. It's basically a protein shake. Some raspberries and strawberries at the top, and I defy you not to want to run a half marathon after eating that. <laughs> <laughs> I oh the, yeah, I mean, ha- have we have we been in any way helpful here? Um. I- Oh, I mean, oh. lean, lean into it. Just enjoy it. They certainly you know? don't aren't alone. Yes, that's no. That's, I think that's, that's very that's true. Very and actually, I would point. recommend Couch to Five K because it is very friendly and nice. Yeah, and I you, think that's yeah. the thing with with exercise as well because I think a lot of people they go hard early. Yeah, and then and then it's it's so off putting. Yeah, you can, get, you can build up. You know, don't don't. Don't hurt yourself. Don't don't go to the point where you hate it. Yeah. And so yes, you absolutely it's delicate. dread it. It's like starting a relationship. Like you shouldn't like move in together immediately. You've no, got to exactly, kind of exactly. Yeah. I mean they, they literally did say they just moved in immediately. So they, <laughs> <laughs> don't necessarily use that as an analogy because they said we moved in immediately <laughs> and it really has worked out for us. <laughs> it's been the best year of our life. It's been the best year of our life, of course it is. It's been the best and last year of our life. <laughs> Um, I'm actually coming out with an app. Um, uh, I'm going to do the uh, 5K to Capsalon, which is I'm slowly <laughs> going to decrease the amount I'm running and increase the amount of chips I'm eating. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's it. I think I think something 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 simple like you know don't expect it all to happen at once. Yeah. Uh, give you maybe maybe that's it. You decrease. So at the moment you're doing seven days a week of indulgence. Knock it down to six and do one day when you run for 20 minutes. Yeah. Not tw- I mean, 20 minutes is a, is a lot just to, to start with. But yeah, you run for five minutes. That's it. You also, run- you know, like a bit a bit of yoga. You can just uh, loads of nice, uh, nice 10 minute yoga stretches. And there are definitely yoga postures that you can still eat in. Yes. Um, <laughs> you get could have the peloton on in front get of you. Get yourself a peloton and that little screen, just flip it into a tray, pop the capsule on top, and you're burning peloton the calories. Peloton to capsule. To capsule but they're, they're, but it's the same company, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a capsule on. We'll do like a capsule on. Uh, we'll market it and it's like a table and chair. <laughs> With a screen on it, and it's just one of us three just talking people through a meal. I've Come on now, guys, let's get it down here. Yeah. Get your forks. <laughs> I, li- I up, like that down, idea. Up, down, get it in your face. If you want it to be healthy, add some raspberries. Um, <laughs> I, th- I like that. I think I think we've helped. I, th- I feel like we've helped. I feel that's that's beef solved. Your brother's sorting out your beef. beef solved. So, is he? You obviously live with uh, your kids. You live with Alice James, uh, friend of the show. Have you got a beef with any of them that you want to deal with on the show now? Yeah, it's quite a simple thing, actually. Ellis won't throw away any jars or um, bottles of things. So he'll use... He only uses blue radox. So he'll use blue radox until there's like an inch left. And then instead of using it all and putting it in the recycling, he just gets a new blue radox out of the cupboard because he buys them in bulk and starts that one. And sometimes there are five bottles of blue radox all with like hardly any left in the bottom and um, he won't throw them away. And the same thing goes for like, I don't really eat jam and he eats a lot of strawberry jam and the same thing happens with jam. So he's got this habit of, yeah, waiting until it's nearly finished. Then... So he's a he's a radox and jam kind of guy. Mm-hmm. 
is he like a pensioner from the 80s? Because <laughs> I don't know anybody. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> what? What's Who going is on this guy? I thought I knew him. He eats a lot of jam. <laughs> yeah, he also eats l- drinks. Both of us do now because I've been influenced by him. Loads of orange squash. And he does the same thing with the squash. Which again is like a petrol from the eighties, and we've also got really into eating quiche. Oh, I love a bit of quiche. Yeah, yeah. and he leaves so a what, bit of quiche he doing? in the bottom. No, he that's, doesn't. That doesn't keep. He doesn't do it with the quiche, but that's because I do all the cooking and cleaning in exchange for him doing the early mornings with the kids. Of course, as yes, previously yes, yes. discussed on parenting lockdown. So that's our deal. Yeah, but because the kids get up later because they're sleeping better these days because the pandemic has been going on for so long. Um, my <laughs> quality of cooking and cleaning has deteriorated because otherwise I'm putting in loads and loads of effort and he's yeah, actually yeah. only getting up like half an hour earlier than me so I've started doing things like buying quiche and being like that's your lunch and you your know. dinner yeah <laughs> <laughs> is there a is there a, is there quiche a, a, and jam again <laughs> yeah exactly cover it in jam if you don't like it <laughs> is there an argument to possibly sit down and rene- renegotiate the contract Yes, I think we should. I feel I like that's that's the that's the bigger the bigger question here is that if you're deliberately doing a bad job of cleaning the house that you also have to live in, if you're going back to your going back to your I can't see dirt days, then maybe maybe you need to say to to Ellis, I tell you what, the third I'll do sense. weekends or you know, I'll do I'll do every other yeah. day or yeah. something like that. I think and maybe, you can actually start yeah. picking up the Hoover once in a while and okay. running around the place. Um I but, think I will but, but I, the I know, beef I, is the, yes, the, the beef is with the, the radar. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. It, it is a tricky one. I think the only thing that I can relate to Ellis on this with is things like ketchup and mayonnaise bottles. I'm very bad with those because they get very hard. Yes. Yeah. They get very hard to get it out of, and I'm 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 like, well, I'm I'm not going to throw it away because there's still some in there, but then I start a new one, so it's like, well, what's your game here? And know what you mean, and then you store it on its side in the fridge, don't you? And it doesn't, it's not at the bottom. Yeah, it's not in the right place. Yeah. So it's not ready to go next time you want it either. And I, it's, it's a terrible habit, I, I, I'm, I'm willing to admit. And I, I admit to... that I do that too. So right. I'm no angel. I just think <laughs> five bottles of Radox. And also, I mean, that is bad. insane. And also, Radox, the great thing with Radox is, or, <laughs> or, or anything <laughs> like that, you put some water in. And away you go. And yeah. also, it's all at the bottom. It can't. Why would you store it on its side? It's you're not having to cram it into. Well, unless you've got very limited space, we do have. A, we put all our bottles on the windowsill. There's enough room for them all to sit upright, right? So it's all at the bottom anyway. It's not like the ketchup. It doesn't yeah. go weird and hard at the end. It's just radox. No. Yeah. So what is his? What is his eventual game plan? That he's going to get enough small amounts to fill a whole bottle. Is that what he's going to do? And sort of, is he going to decant them? Or is he just, like... Has he just what, lost his bloody mind? I what think you, he doesn't... What, like, he, there's definitely no plan. It's just that, in the same way as I didn't used to see dirt, I think he doesn't see... <laughs> I see. The he amount. See the of, number of bottles that yeah. are massive. What would happen, do you think, though... And I'm not saying clean up after him, because we've already said that that's, you know, we've got to renegotiate that. But what do you think would happen if he were to, if you were to take up all of those bottles and just chuck them in the recycling? Do you think he'd go, oh, my Radox collection, what have you done? Or do you think he wouldn't notice? I don't think he'd notice. As long as there was a Radox available, I think I could probably decant them all into one. Um, yeah, because you don't want to be throwing yeah, away that's uh, tricky, though. decent, decent it, Radox. But he that's, should be doing that. Cre- that's creating a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's it's a very tricky one because I don't want to start doing that and then that becomes the, another the, thing. Yeah, I think you've got to you go. Maf- to I think you've got to go mafia on this. Okay, you've got to leave him in his bed. And oh. I know that's also your bed, but mm-hmm. on his side. On his side. So that even um, even on the bedside table. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Make them his problem. Okay. Put them, yeah, hit, bedside table's great, actually, Clarky, because that's his space, you know? That's his space and his space alone. Yeah. Right, your bedside table, that's where you keep your stuff, right? No one else is using that. If you start saying, well, look, you're encroaching on the area, start building a tower of Radox yes. bottles yes. on the bedside table. Let Make the problem his problem. Okay, I'm going to do it. Because at the moment, he's not, he's not acknowledging it. 
I was just thinking, could I know that this is a could I squeeze it all out into the bed if that doesn't work? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could. I mean, you be, could. Bear in and mind, you could, you you could do a layer of jam yeah. on the top of the duvet. Well. <laughs> it would be like that that meal. It'd be like a cap, like a capsule on. Yeah. You're gonna make, you're gonna make a capsule on where the instead of the chips, there's there's a mattress, and instead of the Gouda cheese, there's Radox, and then iceberg lettuce is jam. Yeah. I mean, it's still it's, making me feel. The, hungry, we've got orange weirdly. squash. Stick well. the squash in there. Yeah. Just you know, what you're basically squash doing. Squash on you're, the pillow. You're doing a Gillian McKeith to him, aren't you? You're going. Yeah. That is the muck your <laughs> your life consists of. <laughs> Look at it. It's disgusting. <laughs> I mean, I know he's not eating the radox, but um, but yeah, I yeah. think squirt, squirt the, the remaining radox into his side of the bed. Make sure you've got a nice little, like, I don't know if you've got lots of cushions or whatever, but make sure you've got a nice load of, of cushions and pillows yeah, between. between the two sides. Uh-huh. So it's very clear that that is for his side. He can't yeah. just, you know, roll it over and see how he deals with it. How yeah. do you think he's gonna? How do you think he's gonna react to you squirting lead radox in his bed? I don't think he'd like it. No, that's I think that's that's fair. Yeah, I don't. I think he'd notice definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we're painting him as someone who's not utterly oblivious to the rest of the world. <laughs> how did you sleep last night? Like a log. I'm afraid you're not the man to marry me. It's the uh, it's the princess in the radox bath. <laughs> So yeah. you think he'd notice if he slept in it, if he lay down and there was all radox on him. But it has to happen. It's tough love. Well, also, radox, that blue radox has got very strong smell. Um, of, yeah. I don't know what of, like, sort of... Well, blue, blurry. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, blue. It does smell. <laughs> it smells of blue. That is the yeah. only way you can... Um, there's no way he wouldn't notice the smell before he even pulled the duvet back. But what if he said, what if he walked in and went, oh, this room smells lovely? Well, he might because he loves blue. He'll, it's the only shower gel he'll use. <laughs> it's, 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 it's meant to be relaxing. That's the radox. That's what it's there yeah. for, isn't it? It's supposed to he's, relax he's you. He's going to have the best night's sleep of his life. Yeah, well, may, it'll be like having a lavender like a, under the pillow. Yeah, it's like it's like aromatherapy mixed with a kind of flotation tank. Yeah. It's just, it's going to... And then you've got a situation where he can't get to sleep unless he's got radox. So there's not only going to be radox in the, <laughs> radox in the bedroom, in the bathroom, there's going to be radox in the bedroom and all the empty... Empty pots all around him. I think you're. I think. I think you might be creating more of a problem. I say just yeah. go bottles. Yeah, just bottles on bottles the bedside, on the bedside. table. Bottles there on the bedside go. table or bottles in the bed, and just uh, yeah, and see. Bogies how it on the bed post. Bottles on the bedside table. The Izzy Sooty story. <laughs> Beef. Sold. I could start doing the bogey thing again until he stops doing it. So if if the bedside <laughs> table thing doesn't work, I'll be like, okay. <laughs> Do you think this is the, um, like, isn't that more likely to lead to him walking out? Yeah. Yeah. And then I'd have no one to do the mornings with the kids. Exactly. So. You're, biting, you're, you're picking your nose to spite your face there, aren't you? Yeah. Um, Izzy, thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, tell us about your book before oh, you go. Sure. Um, it's about a girl who can't stop picking her nose. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's trying to stop. Um, it's about a. <laughs> it's called. Jane you typed it with one hand, didn't you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sending the manuscripts into the publisher. Why is there blood all over the pages? I've really got a problem. Oh, <laughs> <God>. <laughs> it's all oh, blood and silverfish yeah. all over the pages. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that would be such a weird if someone opened an envelope and they were like bogeys and the and the creatures in there would be so weird wouldn't it why would it be in an envelope <laughs> I'm just thinking. it's not the kind of thing that i would have put past myself to try and impress a boy when i was like a bit older than the age that i was that i created the bogey mountain at. but i'm i'm I'm, a, I'm older now i'm not going to do that that's um, not anyway, how you that's not how you seduce ellis no, it's him, not. Sent him it, some of your bogeys in a, in a, in a, in a, <laughs> in a jiffy a bag. squeeze of, of radox in an envelope. <laughs> um, it's, about, it's about a woman called Jane uh, who um, discovers that her boyfriend's been cheating on her and moves back in with her parents and then lots of things happen to her and she has to kind of get her life back together. Oh, that sounds great. Thanks. And is it out now? It's out now. It's yeah. available now. 
so yeah. our listeners can go to wherever they would get their books from and uh yeah and get it yes please buy it it's called jane is trying and she's got uh she's anxious about a lot of things but i think it's very light-hearted really so it deals with um some serious issues serious in a, issues yeah, about sure. mental health but yeah. at the same time it's a lot, a lot of laughs as well a lot yeah. of laughs along the way that's great yeah. <laughs> well there you go crosby you can read a fiction i will yes. i will read that yes that's my that is my journey back into fiction fiction yes. written by people i know great it's almost like you're reading a factual book exactly <laughs> and also you know that loads of it it's like you can't really read fiction by anyone and not especially when it's somebody you know who's written it I often go oh that's blatantly so and so that's blatantly so and so like yeah. I think even even Philip Pullman or people who write really um, like science fiction stuff I think a lot of it's like that's actually Marion from next door yeah <laughs> totally. that dragon is is the same as Sandra <laughs> do, you, do you think that was happening to like C.S. Lewis and stuff where like his next door was going uh, Aslan is it me is it based on me <laughs> <laughs> yeah I love the idea is that wardrobe meant to be me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tell me I'm not the witch. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Tumnus, please. Please give me that. Come on, I've got these backwards legs. Surely it's me. <laughs> um, this has been so much fun. It's been so lovely having you on the show. Oh, I've and, really uh, enjoyed it. Thank you. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Get from the sorting out your well, well, well. What a lovely app. Wasn't it just? It was really lovely. I mean, Izzy is not only one of the funniest and most talented people I know, she's also one of the the best people I know. She's just lovely. She's just she a is. great person. And uh, I love hanging out with her. And um, I mean, I don't know if this will have made the edit, but I'm still i, I I'm still feeling guilty. We, we recorded this uh, yesterday and um, I'm still feeling guilty about calling her mum a twat. <laughs> <laughs> I do feel bad. I really feel bad because even as a joke, even a joke we, we we kind of set up in quite a big way. It's still I was so, I was you know this morning and I was having a shower. I was thinking, oh, oh hashtag dear. be kind. <laughs> 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 but um, but yeah, Izzy's Izzy's wonderful. Um, Ellis is obviously a problem. Um, I was <laughs> I was thinking, do you think Ellis? is so obsessed with um radox because it reminds him of his previous job on radiox radio x okay well that was a lovely episode so um (laughs) it was a good episode um speaking of good episodes we've had a message in from jane at beef brothers podcast at gmail.com do get in touch if you'd like to send your beefs or any comments you have about the episodes we're putting out. Beefbrotherspodcast at gmail.com. Mostly nice ones, but sure. Yeah. Well, no, we'll, we'll, we'll take them all. We just won't necessarily read them out. Um, <laughs> greetings, pappies, dear. I very much enjoyed listening to your recent podcast with Alison Spittle. Well, we enjoyed recording it. Yeah. I initially wanted to get in touch to give my support to Crosby's Gravy Bread and urge anyone listening to try it. There's little I enjoy more than mopping up the last scraps of gravies, soups, stews, or really any sauce-based meal with a nice piece of buttered bread. I believe it cuts down on the need to rinse by ensuring said sauce is consumed as nature intended and not shamefully wasted by being washed down the sink. However, I was shocked and appalled by Crosby's admission of pouring additional gravy on the other side of the bread. You should be fully ashamed of yourself. Cheers, everyone. Bye, Jane. <laughs> Front names only. But wow. here's the thing, Jane. That I really am... took a turn. Well, no, I, I've got, I've got, I've got beef with Jane here because I never said buttered bread. She's buttering the bread. You're already getting gravy. Why do you need butter as well? That's it's true. A, it's a dry piece of like you know, you wouldn't butter a naan, would you? You don't need to. It's there to soak no, no, up. Now you've said it. Actually, now I'd like a buttered naan. Oh my god! Oh dear. Well, look, I was going to ask this as well. Would you do a it buttered with curry? naan with capsule on top? That's what we're after. Oh. That's the dream. Two Good slices of naan with capsule on in the middle. Um, yeah, go on. What, would I do it with a curry? Yeah. I mean, you could do if you didn't have any naan bread left over. Yeah, you definitely want to, well, don't of course. you? That's basically what the naan's there for. That's the, the okay, naan is. Fair enough. So I think. I think. Yeah, I think any any sauce based meal, but I'm I'm blown away by the need to make the bread to moisten the bread before you moisten it further. That's why I'm pouring gravy on the top because it's it's a purity to a, a slice of dry bread soaked entirely in gravy. That is pure. It's not. It gets me right where it's pure. I'll say that much. Um, 
so thanks for listening everybody and do get in touch beefbrotherspodcast at gmail.com if you have a beef you would like to uh, you'd like to share on the podcast if you enjoy Izzy Sooty and you want to hear more get to the Patreon because there is bonus footage of Izzy solving a completely uh, a beef that has not been uh, is not included in any way on the main feed it's a fact, cracking bonus beef as well it's a really, really, really good bonus beef. Mm-hmm. So you'll want to you'll want to uh, listen to that. You'll want to mop that up with your ear bread. You'll want to mop it up with your ear bread, guys. Right. Um, uh, we'll see you next time for a uh, for a house meeting. But until then, oh, this episode was produced by Emma Corsham. Corsham team. Cheers, everyone. Bye. Bye. Well. Well, ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding <laughs> for Neighborhood Rock Roll Call. Please be upstanding for Neighborhood Rock Roll Call. Bye. 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 She's got a nice front, and she's got a nice back. It's Sally Mac. Well, let me tell you this, let me tell you this right now. Oh, yeah. He's got a gorgeous glow. <laughs> He's got a gorgeous glow to him. He's got a gorgeous glow. It's Daryl Anslow. Let me tell you now. You can find this person in heaven. You ain't never going to find him in hell. It's Christelle. Oh, yip, 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 yip. <laughs> yip, 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 Well, 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 let me tell you that. She don't go, f- she don't go slow. She don't, watch the she don't go slow. She got a great, well, they, they got a great pace. Yep. They got a great pace. It's a uh, rotated owl face. Rotated owl face. Oh, yeah, well, yep, 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 all right. Yep, yep, yep. Let me tell you now. No man is poor who has friends. And with friends like her, I'll never be poor. Oh. It's Sarah Earnshaw. Oh, Shaw. Shaw. Well, let me tell you now, let me tell you now. Well, <laughs> he moves. Move he just like in big, mysterious ways. He moves just like a big old fish. Oh, oh yeah. he moves yeah, wriggling and jiving. Moved oh, he like moves just like a big old fish. Yeah. With a big old yeah. fin. Well, big old of course fin. he does. It's Peter Gwynn. Peter Gwynn. Peter Gwynn, I don't mind it. Ah, let me tell you now. Oh, he yeah. moves just like the can- uh, the antelope. Not the cantaloupe. He oh. moves just like a cantaloupe. <laughs> he rolling, rolling down rolling a hill. Down. <laughs> he keep rolling, 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 <laughs> just like the cantaloupe. He moves like a like cantaloupe. A he got the moves like cantaloupe. He's got the moves like cantaloupe. He's got the moves like cantaloupe. And I can tell you that now, it's a lot of fun. It's Luke Williamson. Oh, yep, 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 yep. Oh, yep. Well... He, he's stubborn. He's stubborn he's all right. He's stubborn all right. He's stubborn all right. He's got a head just like a block. Yeah. Well, of course he does. It's that there Graham Silcock. Oh, it's that there Graham Silcock. Silcock, right. you oh, stubborn boy, but I love you. I'm going to have to take a bit of a run up on his surname. I'm not going to lie to you right <laughs> oh, now. Oh, yeah, that's it. Oh, oh that's that, a doozy. Okay, oh, let me just, I'm going to, I'm, I'm apologizing in advance for any misappropriation and mispronunciation that I might do for this fine fellow. Oh, he, oh he's a fine fellow. He's a fine fellow. You see him at a buffet, he'll have a bit of that. He'll have a bit of this. Oh, he yeah. is, of course, Adam Colopsidatis. Do you know what? That was real good, boy. That was really good. And I apologize, Adam, if I if I butchered your name. But I know you do like a buffet. Well, my boy here. Well. You got them long arms. Oh, I like them long oh, arms. Oh, you got them long arms. Them long arms. He good for putting things up in shelves. Good yeah. for tickling. Tickling. 
Uh, but it looks just like a gibbon. <laughs> oh, baby, he looks just like a gibbon tickling well, you. Of course he does. It's Chris Gibson. I, I tell you what, so Chris. Off, right? but, uh, Chris Gibson looks like a gibbon <laughs> with his long arms. Oh, he's got them long yeah, arms. Yeah, yeah. Good basketball. Let me I'll tell you, he go, oh, yeah, you know, he can tap you on the shoulder from three people away. Let me tell you, he's got no long arms, <laughs> he got yeah. Long arms. Oh, my God, he could pick a giant's nose. He got those long oh, arms. Why you drop know? my keys down that drain? Come on. <laughs> okay. he's, got, he's got those thin, long arms. He's got them thin, you know, yeah. like Mr. Tickle. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. absolutely a lot of to do. Go straight round to U-Band. Don't you worry about that. Now, let me tell you, this guy, he's got them long arms. Legs. Oh, he's got them long oh, arms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got them long legs. He could kick God in the face. He's got them <laughs> long legs. You know. Oh, yeah. He can do the split across county lines. He got them long legs. Let me oh, tell you yeah. now. And those long legs are the kind of legs I like. Ooh, and his name baby. is Mike. <laughs> oh, That's right. Oh, let me tell you. This lady. This lady. She got them long arms. She got them long arms. She got arms. them long arms. I've been talking about them for years now. She got them long arms. Oh, oh yeah. She got them long arms. Them long arms look just like a cable. They look like a cable. Oh, come on over here, Sophie Abel. Come on, Sophie Abel. Come on, Sophie Smile Abel. on your brother. Everybody get together. together to try to love one another right now. That concludes the Patreon Neighborhood Watch Roll Call. Boy, boy, well, you've been, been real good sports just listening long, and uh, it's worse boys just talking into that can. <laughs> From good old boy talking into a can. Oh, yeah. Yeehaw. Hi, it's Rachel Fisher from the Hollywood Crime Scene Podcast, and I'm here to talk to you about Shudder. Shudder is the ultimate streaming service for fans of horror, thrillers, and the supernatural. Shudder offers an unbeatable selection from Hollywood favorites like Halloween and cult classics like one of my personal favorites, Chopping Mall, to original series like Creepshow and The Last Drive-In with Joe Bob Briggs. Check out critically acclaimed new genre films that you won't find anywhere else, all uncut and commercial free. If you're a horror fan like me or just looking for new content to stream, Shudder is a must-have subscription. Sign up and subscribe to Shudder.